Um, in schools, what do you think teachers can help with the Muslim students and do they face any challenges, the students? Uh, Muslim students uh, generally in schools don't face major uh, challenges any more than uh, I would or certain people will face in, uh, in, uh, you know, in the workplace. Um, the most important thing they need to, to learn to know is that uh, learn what the, the Muslim per, uh, student is, is doing before you judge what he's doing. Uh, try to understand. Take the time and have the Muslim student come up in front of the class and explain. What is that thing you're doing at lunchtime? Oh, this is my prayer. Or what does it do? And you know, Let them explain this. And tell the teachers, you know, you need to understand. There is a separation between state uh, and church. You cannot teach religion and, and indoctrinate or preach religion in sc public schools on all levels, but you can teach about religions. You can have a class that says, sits and explains and bring in a, a pastor, a rabbi, a Jew, uh, uh, an imam, a, uh, a priest, and have them come in and explain the religion. You can have a student stand up and explain religion. There's absolutely nothing wrong. You can actually quote from the Bible, from the Quran, from the Torah, uh, if that is related to the class. If you're teaching, for example, English lit literature, yes, you can use these books. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you're teaching foreign languages, yes, you can quote from these books, no problem. What is, what is not allowed is to actually teach the religion in school as part of, you know, well, you, now boys and girls are going to get up and do the prayer. That's not allowed in public schools. But you can teach them about the religion. So take the time and learn. Educate the kids now. And don't grab the first stupid book you find out there. Look at more books. If you have, now the internet is, everything is available on the internet. You know, uh, you start self, uh, type the word Islam in Google and you'll find the good and bad and the ugly. So try, if you're going to, don't look at the ugly, look at the good and see, learn and understand and ha encourage your students to, to understand. Um, as far as with that, like I was getting back to the issue with the women and the headdress, you mentioned it, that they cover up to, you know, I guess to save themselves just for their husband or just, it's, it's not for other men to see is covered just so your husband can see you? The, the, the covering is, is to give separation between the men and the women. Mm -hmm. uh, it is to prevent men from looking at the women and having you know, the lust in their heart for them. Because, I mean, come on, you, you know, mm -hmm. you're a man. You, know, you, you, you look at the girl, it's, you know. Mm -hmm. So the covering makes it simple, and the dress is simple, and uh, it prevents doesn't really prevent it totally. I mean, you know, a, a guy is going to look at the girl is going to look at the girl, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it gives that uh, less chances of, you know, um, looking with a desire. See what I mean? And uh, that look with the desire is what leads to the next step and the next step and the next step. Mm -hmm. So uh, keeping the, the, the men and women with some kind of separation between them helps minimize that, that kind of activity. Now, I will never claim that there is absolutely no, uh, you know, illicit inter interaction between men and women in Islam. No, there, there is, uh, and people are people, you know. But uh, the the more that you prevent it and put some preventive, you know, things in the way and make it a little bit more difficult, uh, it, it helps. Now, as far as uh, the woman can, uh, you know, uncover in front of her husband, in front of her parents, in front of her brothers. Um, you know, um, her immediate family is, is what we call in, in, uh, in Arabic uh, mahram, means a person that who's not uh, able to marry her, you know, like her brother, you know, and stuff like that. So if she does not have uh, a headscarf, you go out of shorts, so that's fine, that's no problem. Okay. When September 11th incident occurred, did you, and then it was came out who did it, like they were Muslims, did you feel like like a backlash of people saying that it was instead of just being those individuals that were all Muslims or out doing it out to get us as Americans. Yeah, that that was a lot, there was a lot of that out there, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. And uh, you know, like I said before, uh, people people sometimes um, 
you can understand the people who, who, who uh, say these things are people who have an objective in there. You know, if, if I, I remember when I was in, uh, in Omaha, we had a radio talk uh, show on, on Sunday afternoon, actually, uh, called uh, Faith to Faith. And we had a priest uh, and, and a rabbi and uh, me or, or Sister Gretchen used to come in and, and do the show sometimes. And uh, it was basically open phone. Uh, if you have any question, uh, question about any of these three religions, um, and we had, uh, we went through, you know, different, uh, uh, you get, you know, a Presbyterian, you get a Catholic, you got, you know, different backgrounds from Christianity, and we got, you know, Reformed uh, Jew uh, Jewish uh, rabbi and uh, uh, Orthodox Jewish and stuff like that. So we had a lot of mix in there. So people, if you have a question, you know, this is your chance to talk. And uh, as long as we're agreeing with everybody, nobody called. Mm -hmm. And when you start arguing with everybody, everybody mm -hmm. calls. Mm -hmm. So you can understand these people on the TV and these people on the radio, uh, they're getting paid to do this. They're getting paid mm -hmm. to rile the people. You know, it's, it's not about Muslims or issues or, or any, anything. It's about the money. So the, when after September 11, a lot of people found that this is a great opportunity to make a lot of money really quick. And you'll find out... Uh, TVs, uh, magazines, newspapers that had all of a sudden start thinking about, okay, it, let, Islam is the problem. Uh, Muslims are the problem. The Quran is the problem. And they take certain quotes out of, uh, of a sentence in, in the Quran and uh, blow it up away out of proportion and get people, you know, I, I've, I've sat there and watched this, things on some uh, TV stations that just, I mean, they were... These are experts supposed to be. And of course, they were not Muslims. They're about experts about Islam. And uh, they, they, they say things that absolutely against everything backwards. I mean, they say they, they will be asked, do Muslims do this? Yes, they do. And it has nothing to do with Islam. It's actually the back things from, you know, backwards from not Islams, but they're the experts. They're all for the money. So there is a backlash, unfortunately, but the backlash is driven by people who have no interest other than their own benefit. And when that happens, you got people who unfortunately don't have the time, don't want to take the time, or the responsibility of educating themselves, and they take it and run with it. So it becomes the Islam and Muslims. You want to build a masjid here, you have 3,000 people there complaining. You know, but if you want to build a church in the same spot, nobody complains. Mm -hmm. But if it's a masjid, oh, we complain, we're not complaining about Islam or Muslim, we complain about the traffic. Mm -hmm. But there's a bigger Catholic church right next door, and it has 10 times as much traffic. Oh, no, they're Catholics. That's okay. I am not against Catholics, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just a mindset. But, yeah, yeah, there was a big backlash, unfortunately, by people who not, don't have the right intentions. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the American Nation of Islam? Yes. I mean, how is your, uh, your Islam coincide with that one, like under Louis Farrakhan, that nation? Uh, we do not agree with a, a lot of their principles. Um, we, um, there are they have added things to, to the Islamic faith that are not part of the Islamic faith. And even uh, Elijah Muhammad's son, uh, who, Elijah Muhammad who started the Nation of Islam, his son, you know, who, who split away from that and went back to the normal Orthodox Islam. Uh, he just passed away, I think, a year and a half ago, two years ago. And uh, so we do not agree with their methodology. We don't agree with a lot of their principles. And their maybe could you talk real quick maybe about the pilgrimage to Mecca that all Muslims can take if they're able. Have you ever done it or do you ever plan to do it? I plan on doing it, God willing, uh, but uh, it takes a, lot of, uh, takes a lot of time and money and uh, we have, uh, what it is is uh, we go back to Mecca and remember all the, the, the journey of Abraham and his son Ishmael and all the prophets that have uh, took that journey to Mecca. And in that, the ritual, so we don't have a lot of time, uh, the ritual is very long, uh, but a lot of details in it, but uh, it does take a lot of time, a lot of money to go down there. Uh, God willing, we'll, you know, soon, then soon, a couple of years maybe, I'll be able to do it before I get too old. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, thank you so for, much for allowing us to do this. Yeah, you're welcome.